Well, hello there and welcome to CSS Hero version 4 and in this video I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what you can accomplish by using this fantastic plugin. Now CSS Hero has been designed to allow you to make design changes to your site a lot easier than you normally would. So the general idea behind CSS Hero is that you click on an element that you want to apply a change to and then simply apply that change. So as an example, let's say I wanted to change the color of Titanfall Review. I can click on Titanfall Review and now over here to the left, under the CSS Hero tab, you can see all the available properties. I can click on typography, for example, and then in here, I can click on color, and now I can begin to change the color of Titanfall Review. I can come over here to font size, increase the font size, maybe make it a little bit bigger, and there you go. And it's as easy as that. You simply click on an element, come over here and apply those changes. Now that's for the CSS Hero tab, over here you have the inspector tab. Now this shows you the actual CSS code. So if you're familiar with CSS, this will be wonderful for you. If you're not familiar with CSS, you don't like it, you can always just stick with the CSS Hero tab and you'll be good to go. Now over here in the middle, this is where you have access to the different screen sizes. Now why is this important? Well, understand that a lot of people use the internet on their phones. So as a result, you want to make sure that your website looks good on all screen sizes. So in here right now, I can click on the max width of 1024 pixels. This typically would be the tablet device when viewed on a landscape mode. So I can click on there right now, and you can see this is how my website will look like when it's viewed on a tablet. And then in here would be for the portrait version of the tablet. And then the final two in here are for the actual mobile phones. So it's very, very important that you ensure that your site looks good across all screen sizes. And CSS Hero allows you to make those changes and view those changes on all those screen sizes very easily. Now over here, you have access to the edit and the navigate buttons. Now what do these two do? Well, by default, when you launch CSS Hero, it will be set to the edit function, meaning that yes, I am ready to make changes, design changes to my site. But let's say, for example, I wanted to actually click on Titanfall Review and go to that page. I can come here right now, switch over to Navigate, and then click on Titanfall Review. And now this will take me to the actual page for Titanfall Review. I can go back in here right now, switch back to the edit mode, and then begin to apply my changes all over again. So that's how uh, these two work. Now over here, you have access to the almighty undo, redo, and the history buttons. So what do these guys do? Well, let's say for example, I came in here to Titanfall Review, I clicked in, in there, and I changed the color to, uh, let's say I go all the way over here to like pink or purple, for example, and then I realized that, you know what? I actually don't like this color. This really looks bad, okay? I can come in here right now, click on the uh, undo button right here, and this will take me back to the original color for Titanfall Review. But then let's say, for example, I actually liked the purple color. I can come back in here, click on the redo button, and that will take me back to the purple color. So that's what those two do. And then over here, you have access to the history button where you can take a look at all the changes you've made over a period of time. Very, very useful tools for you. Now, over here, you have access to checkpoints. What exactly do these do? Well, let's say you were designing a website for a client of yours and you have two different kinds of styles, right? Let's say one style has a particular uh, text color, it has a particular text size, and you're using a different font family. You can apply those changes, right? Save that as checkpoint one, and then apply new changes, change the font color, change the font size, do all that good stuff, save that as checkpoint number two, and then you can simply load checkpoint one, show your client that, hey, okay, here over here for version one, we have this color, we have this font size. They look at it, they say, okay, well, what about version two? And then you can simply load version two, which would be checkpoint two, and then show them the different style. So that's basically what checkpoints do. They allow you to make a whole bunch of changes, save those changes together as one, and basically load that change whenever you want it to do so. So that's what checkpoints do for you. Now, project. Over here, you have access to the media query manager. Now, in here, this is where you can get very specific with screen sizes, because in here right now, you can set the minimum width for your screen size, and then the maximum width, and then view 
how your page would look like when viewed on that particular screen size. So as an example, I can come here right now and say, okay, let's say this is viewed on a screen size between a minimum width of 230 pixels and a maximum width of 400 pixels. I can click on add. And now right now, let me close this. Right now over here, you can see we now have access to the screen size of minimum width 230 pixels and maximum width of 400 pixels. And that's basically how my website will look like when viewed on this very specific type of screen size. Isn't that amazing? That's what you can do under the, the Media Query Manager. Let me just switch this back to desktop view. Let's go back in here. You've got the selectors tree. What exactly is this? Well, let me just quickly scroll back up. I go back to project, click on selectors tree. This shows you the hierarchical structure of your web page. So as an example right now, you can see we've got body, wrap, site header, and so on. But notice that as I begin to hover down on each one of these items, notice that they begin to indicate which which part of your page they're actually active in. So as an example, if I keep on hovering down in here and right there, you can see I am on site dash navigation dash wrap nav. This shows me that or this tells me that, okay, this is the element that contains my menu items. So let's say as an example, I wanted to change the background color for my navigational menu. I can click in there and then over here, I can go back over here to properties, click on background click on color, and now I can simply change the color of my navigational menu. So that's the main use of your tree selector. It shows you the hierarchical structure of your page, and you can simply quickly navigate to the parts of your page where you wanna make your changes to. Let me go ahead and close this. We have access to project variables. Now, let's say for example, I really like this purple color, right? Let me just go back in here. Click in here, and so let's say for example, uh, this is the hexadecimal value for this color, it is DD16CD. Now, I am not a robot, I'm a human being, and it's gonna be hard for me to remember this particular code. And let's say I wanted to use this particular color over and over again. What I can do is that I can save this code as a name, I can call this, let's say pink, for example. And then rather than me having to remember this code, I can simply remember the word pink and then apply pink over and over again throughout my site. And if in the future, I wanted to make a change to the pink color, maybe change the variation a little bit to maybe C460BC, I can make that change to pink, save the change, and it will automatically apply that change to every element I've applied the variable to. Don't worry, we'll talk about variables a lot more in another video. And then finally, on the project, we have access to manage Google Fonts. And this is where you can add any Google Font that you want. You have the different categories in here. You've got the sans serif, serif, and so on. So as an example, if I like ABZ, I can simply click on the plus button in here and then add that to my list of fonts. And then if in the future, I don't wanna use the font family anymore, I can go back in here and simply remove the font and it will be gone. So that's how you can simply apply Google Fonts to your font library. And then we have access to tools. The first one here is view as unlocked. So you may wanna view your page as an unlocked user, basically someone who has come to your site as a visitor and you wanna see what your page would look like. You can click on view as unlocked and this will take you to how, or this will show you how your page would look like when you're not logged in. Very, very, very useful. And then you can also choose to style your login page. We all know that the default uh, login page for WordPress isn't exactly the most attractive. So you can click in there, come in here right now and begin to apply uh, whatever changes you wanna make. You can apply your background image, change the colors of your text, add, whatever changes you wanted to make and simply save them. And finally, you have access to reset theme edits. So let's say for example, you've made a whole bunch of changes and you know what, you don't like them, you just wanna go back to how things were at the very beginning. You can simply click on reset theme edits and that will take you all the way back to how things were right from the start. Well, this has been a brief introduction to the CSS Hero plugin. Be sure to check out other videos in our library where we explore in more detail the various tools and functions available with the plugin.